I think the future for Tetra is extremely bright. Um, it's now probably about 11, 12 years since the, uh, the first Tetra, Tetra implementations went in, you know, went in place. We've seen throughout that the, the uh, Etsy Project Tetra, the various working groups have continued to enhance the Tetra standard. Um, you know, we now have nationwide systems which really are providing critical service for uh, whole groups of users, be it the emergency services, be it uh, orange light services, um, anybody who actually needs uh, a communication system that allows them to communicate for either mission critical communications, safety critical communications, uh, but also just in terms of doing day-to-day -day business. Um, what we're seeing at the moment is an awful lot of work that's being done in terms of standardizing uh, you know, Tetra to, to bring in the Tetra Enhanced Data Service, TEDS. Um, initial implementations have got TEDS which should just sit on top of uh, the you know, Tetra 1 um, implementations. There's a lot of work going on to basically have direct access TEDs. So we won't necessarily need to have the uh, initial Tetra systems there. So work is going on all the time to make sure that Tetra as a standard, Tetra as a, as a system, um, is being enhanced to, to, to meet continually changing uh, user requirements. It's probably the most, um, most secure private mobile radio um, standard there is. Um, which means that you know, when you are using it for mission critical in the public safety uh, environments, that you know, it is going to meet, meet your needs. So yeah, the future for Tetra is bright. I'm actually doing a presentation tomorrow, and the title of the presentation is Will There Ever Be a Better um, Mission Critical System Than Tetra? I think um, if you look out around the world at the other technologies that are out there, Tetra beats them all hands down. One of the great benefits of Tetra is the fact that we have a whole host of uh, suppliers and manufacturers. You just look around the Tetra World Congress here, and you can see manufacturers who are making infrastructure, manufacturers who are making terminals, and that sort of competition, it both drives the cost down, which is, in you know, the current day and age is very, very important, um, but it also brings innovation in, as the manufacturers and suppliers try to outdo, I suppose is one phrase, but they try to get the little little hooks into their own products that mean that they can actually sell to uh, as wide a marketplace as possible. If you look at P25, which is um, the other major um, PMR standard that's used for, for public safety, we see an awful lot of that obviously in the States. Australia is used an awful lot. Um, I, I personally feel that P25 is less feature rich than Tetra. If you look at the handsets for P25, they, they, they don't do anywhere near as much as, as, as the Tetra handsets do. But there are very, very good reasons why um, countries such as Australia and, and the United States for that matter would deploy a P25 system across a wide area than a Tetra system. Australia basically, if you look at it, it's got what, five major cities um, and the rest really is, is a vast open expanse. P25 actually meets the needs of those particular users far better than, than Tetra would do. It's, it's, it's more economic to deploy. But as standard, Tetra is certainly more feature rich and I don't think there will ever be a better um, mission critical um, radio system than, than, than Tetra. We know that Tetra doesn't do broadband data at the moment and therefore there is a need for users if they want broadband data and an awful lot of users are saying they do to look out for other technologies that they can combine and use alongside Tetra. At the moment we aren't saying that those broadband technologies can do the voice elements and indeed not the short data elements that Tetra is absolutely superb at doing. But there's no reason why you can't combine the use of Tetra with LTE, hopefully. And we're looking at that, we're seeing a lot, you know, a lot more people looking at LTE as a means of uh, getting their broadband data, but WiMAX systems, possibly mesh networks. Um, and we, we see an awful lot of um, users who use just standard um, GSM-based systems. GPRS is used quite a lot as, as a data bearer, a very simple data bearer alongside Tetra, so that uh, they have a choice of bearer. And there are an awful lot of products out there at the moment that do combine um, or, or are multi-bearer uh, products. So they can be Tetra, they can be GPRS, potentially they can be satellite as well, perhaps Wi-Fi. So if you've got, um, take an ambulance vehicle, which uh, when it's out and about could be on either a Tetra network or a GPRS network, it goes back to the ambulance station and it can then connect uh, locally on the Wi-Fi network. So there is a whole host of different ways to combine the technologies. There's no reason why Tetra can't, be, can't operate alongside um, a range. So the users have a choice. I don't think we'll find, I'm pretty sure, we won't see any users who currently use Tetra for voice and for short data, giving that up quickly. There has to be something that offers all of those particular features in 
you know, in, in the new, uh, new standards, new radio technologies. Well, Tetra World Congress, I've been coming to Tetra World Congress since the very first one in Berlin in 1990-something, probably 1999. I've been to all of them since. It's growing and growing. And looking around here in, uh, in Budapest at the moment, today, then there's a great buzz about the place. Um, there's, you know, the, the manufacturers and suppliers, the people who've got stands and what have you, have, have all got something, a story to tell. If you're in the Tetra business, this is the place to be. In fact, if you're in the radio business for public safety, for um, other, you know, utility, transportation, you, it is the place to come and find out exactly what's going on in the mobile radio world.